Good evening and welcome to the COVID-19 update on Channel's television. I'm Millicent Walker. Here are some of the highlights this hour. 46 rapid test kits submitted by local and foreign manufacturers failed to meet expected performance requirements according to Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria. Textile Workers Union demand reduction in central banks' interest rates for textile manufacturing sector. And London Mayor Sadiq Khan warns residents of tougher coronavirus restrictions. According to the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, the country is approaching about 600,000 uh, samples tests of COVID-19. And this is uh, with regards to the number of Nigerians that have been tested for the coronavirus. According to the National Coordinator of the PTF, it is actually quite low. He says the target is for every state to test at least 1% of its population. And only the FCT has achieved this target. Um, Mr. Liu said that Lagos is fast approaching the target with about 97% achievement, but other states are barely above 25%. This goal becomes even more important as we continue to relax our restrictions. Remember that the coronavirus spreads silently and quickly, which is why we must follow the safety measures at all times, especially in our schools and when in large gatherings. The NCDC announced 164 new cases in 20 24 hours reported from 14 states and the federal capital territory. It of course saw Lagos leading the pack with 64 cases followed by the FCT that recorded 26 cases. Enugu recorded 20, Kaduna 11, Oyo State 11 as well. Plateau recorded eight cases. Uh, seven cases were recorded in Ondo State, four in Anambra, three in Nasarawa State, another three in Oshun State. Uh, states like Eboi, Imo recorded two cases each, while Benue, Katsina and Ogun States recorded one each. More people recovered from the virus, 208 in the last uh, 24 hours in 10 states. That's including the federal capital territory. Enugu State discharged the highest at over 100 uh, patients, followed by Plateau State at uh, 52. The country has recorded no deaths at uh, still cases, uh, death toll at 1,115 uh, case fatality ratio of 1.8%. Now, the Federal Government Girls College in Owari Imo State resumed alongside other unity schools across the country. Our Imo State correspondent, Eitakwe Kutegi, who monitored resumption, also spoke to some business owners in the school vicinity as to how they feel about the students' resumption. In line with the federal government's directives for unity schools to reopen across the country after eight months of closure due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the federal government girls' college in Owe, the Imo State capital, joined their counterparts in other parts of the country to resume today. Even though students in exiting classes who were bid to ride the WIAC and NECO examinations have resumed since August. Although we're not permitted to take shots within the school premises, but one of the teachers who spoke to Channel Television said the students are in high spirits and all measures have been put in place to ensure that the students adhere strictly to the COVID-19 protocols. Since a uh, few weeks now, the head of the resumption of the school, at least I've received some calls from the students that are feeling very fine, they are ready to come back, so today we resume fully. Some business owners who do business within the school environment expressed delight on the news of the school resumption. They said this will have positive effect on their businesses. We are, we, we are having customers now, but since two, three, four, five months now, we don't have a, we just stay, stay idle. We are not selling anything. Every morning we, 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 we care. Before, um, till night, we can't get up to 3,000. From already most capital, a Yitopakutai for COVID-19 update. 
Over in Yobe State, the government has commanded students of public schools for early resumption after six months of a forceful stay at home. The Commissioner of Basic and Secondary Education in the state, Dr. Mohamed Idris, who disclosed this while on a visit to some schools in the state, charged them to strictly comply to the NCDC safety protocols. He also appreciated teachers and parents for their determination and patience during the coronavirus lockdown. This is unprecedented. Uh, look at the number that is coming, is resuming uh, from day one. And uh, the, uh, the, 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 the uncommon passion the principals and the teachers are having, uh, you know, towards revitalizing uh, this industry is uh, very, very commendable. Uh, I want to use this opportunity to appreciate the doggedness of our governor who came to our aid at the time of our need by providing those uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, approved materials. For more on flattening the curve, joining us from our Buddha studio is Dr. Jafia Abubakar. He is the Deputy Incident Manager, National COVID-19 Emergency Operations Centre with the NCDC. Thank you for joining us on the programme. Thank you. First, based on the NCDC's um, daily situation reports on COVID-19, how would you say Nigeria is doing with regards to um, the response? Would you say that we have passed the peak of the virus? Um, yeah, um, as NCDC has worked hard to increase its testing capacity, um, across all the 36 states and the FCT, we have uh, 70 labs now um, with the capacity to test over um, uh, 10,000 samples daily. Uh, however, recently we have seen a decline in the number of uh, cases that we see daily from the states. Uh, this decline in the number of cases is closely you know, um, related to the decrease in the number of samples that are being collected uh, by the states. So it would have been nice to see a situation whereby we have increased sample collection from the states with decreased positivity. Then we, we can be very categorical to really say that uh, we, are, we have reached the peak. So we want to see a situation whereby the sample uh, collection has increased and positivity has decreased. Uh, but as Riley mentioned, a few states are doing very well, like uh, the FCT. Uh, Lagos is also uh, about to reach that mark. So we want to see that happening in other states uh, as well. The question now is, what are you doing to indeed help states increase capacity for testing? And this is also asking, with regards to community transmission, what local government areas across the 774 are we seeing more uh, transmissions? So um, as of today, um, we have about 600 uh, LGS out of the 774 having at least one or more cases being reported. Uh, it will also be um, uh, good to inform us here that uh, about, um, about, about uh, 72 percent of cases that we have in Nigeria, we do not have their exposure histories. So that means that we still have community transmission uh, happening across the country. But to say categorically the number of LGS that have uh, community transmission is going to be difficult. Just that we have about 600 LGS having one or more cases in the country. With regards to the safe school reopening, uh, especially for the local government areas that have more uh, transmission or are witnessing a larger infection, is there anything more um, that schools in those areas can do um, to keep them safe? Yeah, so generally the first thing that the NCDC did in collaboration with the PTF and the Federal Ministry of Education is to provide guidance to all states on safe school reopening. Our states have a responsibility to form uh, the uh, state health team. And of course also the uh, LGS have a responsibility, the schools themselves have a responsibility. In the schools they have to ensure that 
uh, all these school com kids, school children coming back to the school, uh, their information are well captured. Uh, the second thing is to ensure we have tried point, points at the entry for anyone going into such schools. Their temperature must be taken. They have to ensure that they sanitize their hands and they are using uh, a face mask. The other thing also um, that is in the guideline uh, is that schools should identify sample collection sites. Schools should ensure that students are in classrooms that are well ventilated as, and hostels that are clearly uh, well ventilated also with very good social distancing measures. Uh, also, there should be a very good communication uh, plan uh, set, it, set up by the, by, by, the, by the schools to ensure that parents can be reached at a short you know, period of time. And of course, the LGS and the states have a responsibility to constantly uh, communicate with the schools to ensure that everything is going on uh, you know, uh, very well. Uh, of course, also, um, teachers and health uh, personnel within the school bay are also um, trained on how to safely use their personal protective equipment and how to also keep uh, safe. I must ask at this point, with several regions and countries witnessing to endemics and even a second wave uh, of the coronavirus, uh, you mentioned that we've expanded our testing capacity in terms of uh, the laboratory network across the country. But um, if we were to have a second wave or perhaps a first wave or even more cases, is Nigeria prepared? Yes, so a second wave is not inevitable, uh, but it depends on our collective responsibility as a people. Uh, you witness, you are witness, you know, you've seen that government has taken uh, the forefront in this response that we, have, we are on now. So uh, we want to see a situation whereby people collectively take responsibility so that everybody, you know, takes measures that you know have been always been outlined so that people can stay safe we also want to see organizations and institutions uh, instituting you know um, safety measures uh, across their their, their 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 places of work to ensure that people comply you know with the uh, non-pharmaceutical interventions like the use of the face mask hand washing facilities and keeping uh, physical distancing from one person to the other so generally uh, it's a collective responsibility. It's not just the responsibility of government. Everybody has a role uh, to play in this. All right. We would like to appreciate your time. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Abubakar, the Deputy Incident Manager, National COVID-19 Emergency Operations Centre with the NCDC. Thank you for joining us on the programme. Thank you for having me. Now, the Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria says all 46 rapid test kits submitted to it for validation by some local and foreign manufacturers failed to meet the expected performance requirements and therefore cannot be deployed for the testing of COVID-19 in the country. Speaking at a news conference in Abuja, the registrar of the council noted that while many of the validated test kits did well in their specificity requirements, the manufacturers did uh, need to improve on the sensitivity and accuracy requirements for the kits. Thank you very much. The 22 rapid test kits being reported upon, though they fulfill the requirement of being a rapid test kit, that means you don't need any equipment, you can get your results within 15 minutes, but they did not meet that standard of 95%. Although some of the kids demonstrated relatively good specificity, as you could see some had, one or two had about 100%, 97. But these same kids have very poor sensitivity and they are not suitable. And for any kid to be suitable, it must meet both the specificity and the sensitivity. That is why they are not recommended. It is to be noted that the 22 rapid test kits in this report have not, I repeat, have not meant the expected performance characteristics 
of sensitivity and specificity of to qualify them for deployment for the purpose of testing in disease surveillance and routine diagnosis in Nigeria. Still to come on the program, the NADC flags off distribution of medical equipment for COVID-19. Please join us again. Welcome back. And to combat the co coronavirus in the region, the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, has flagged off the distribution of 54 polymerase chain reaction PCR machines and related medical items to health institutions. Speaking during the ceremony at the NDDC warehouse in D-Line, Port Harcourt, the Acting Managing Director, Professor Kam uh, Kemi Brady Kumar Ponde, said the coronavirus pandemic is still spreading and as such, there is need for increased testing. According to him, the NDDC is a foremost interventionist agency and had been in the forefront of efforts to address the health concerns of the people in the region in the face of the novel virus. He hopes the benefiting institutions will put them into good use for both testing of patients for COVID-19 and also for research purposes. The National Union of Textile Garment and Tailoring Workers of Nigeria, they're demanding a further reduction in the interest rate by the Central Bank of Nigeria intervention facilities from 9 to 5 percent. Speaking with Channels Television, the president of the union also wants an extension of the one-year moratorium from March 2020 on principal repayments on CBN intervention facilities due to the devastating impact of the coronavirus pandemic and the industry. As COVID-19 still does not have any known cure, the need for increased awareness and proper attention to sanitization and some personal hygiene at our homes and workplaces remain extremely important. We demand for massive public spending on public health. We also commend in particular the Central Bank for the direct intervention to ameliorate the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economic and the textile industry in particular through palliative. We equally demand for further reduction in interest rate and extension of the moratorium given the devastating impact of COVID-19 on the textile industry. Now, pharmacists have been involved in the COVID-19 fight in Nigeria, with not less than 50 uh, pharmacists getting infected and very sadly, uh, three of them dying from it. But yet, they are unrelenting and asking for optimal services uh, in hospitals. We have joining us Mr. Jalili Kalani. He's the chairman, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, the FCT, also a member the National Executive Committee of the Association of Hospital and Administrative Pharmacists of Nigeria. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Good evening, Millicent. Nice All right. You. Good to have you. Now, pharmacists and also community pharmacists are really playing uh, various roles in supporting healthcare during uh, COVID-19. But tell us a bit more about some of the ways, the newer ways that, you know, pharmacists are reinventing themselves um, during this pandemic. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the role of pharmacists, uh, the roles have actually evolved. And um, the major uh, philosophy of pharmacy practice now is what we call pharmaceutical care, which is the responsible provision of uh, drug therapy for the purpose of achieving therapeutic out outcomes that will improve or maintain a patient's quality of life. So uh, during this uh, period of uh, COVID, whatever, uh, in whatever form or way we can make sure that we alleviate uh, the problems of the patients, those are the things that we engage in. It could be like uh, telemedicine, whereby uh, uh, in most of our hospitals, we have drug information centers whereby we follow patients' uh, uh, health care, uh, I mean, th th their well-being, even when they're out of the hospital, 
to know whether they are doing well or not, or whether they are having uh, drug reactions, where, uh, which are, uh, have to be uh, actually tackled, uh, in fact, if they, even if they need to come back to the hospital for further evaluation and further treatment. So we have been engaged in training and retraining of our members uh, so that they will know what to do at any point in time, especially during this period of COVID-19, uh, whereby uh, everybody is actually involved uh, pharmacists are involved in infection prevention and control programs. We uh, collaborate with other healthcare uh, providers, uh, the physicians, the nurses, the lab scientists, uh, to make sure that we have a kind of holistic approach to the uh, management of patients. So we are always uh, trying to make sure we update our knowledge so that we can give the best possible to our patients. Indeed, but would you say that th these new methods or uh, this new norm has perhaps come to stay and this is um, beyond uh, the coronavirus pandemic? Um, well, uh, sadly, well, um, we, have, uh, we are now faced with a, what we call a new normal, uh, whereby we need to actually uh, take uh, proper care of our hygiene, especially hand hygiene, hand sanitization, uh, making sure that we do not infect others. And uh, we need to continue this education. Um, yes, uh, we, uh, the uh, infection is like tapering, but we cannot let in our guts because we have to make sure that we, con uh, we curtail the spread of infection, whether coronavirus infection or, or any other infection. I think this issue of our hygiene uh, and uh, hand sanitization and and other ways of making sure that we improve our health condition, we have to continue. So um, this new normal, I think we need to uh, live with it and so that we can uh, be able to uh, co contain a further epidemic or a pandemic in the future. And with the help of the pharmacists, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Mr. Jalili Kalani. He's the chairman, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, the Federal Capital Territory. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. The World Health Organization has warned that it is both unethical and unscientific to let the coronavirus run free in the hope of achieving the so-called herd immunity. The WHO Director General was speaking that the herd immunity is a concept used for vaccination. Meanwhile, London's mayor says the city is within a few days of being escalated to a new and stricter level of COVID-19 measures. Here's more on the global update. Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, says it is inevitable that the city will move into Tier 2 of the government's new COVID curbing system, one in that a trigger point will soon be reached. Well, I've always promised Londoners that I'll be upfront and frank with them and honest, and uh, I'm afraid the bad news is that all the indicators we have, the number of new cases, uh, the positivity rate, admissions to hospitals, uh, admissions in ICUs, uh, cases of older people, uh, all the indicators we have are that things are going in the wrong direction. The system announced by the Prime Minister yesterday evening will see areas put into different categories labelled as medium, high or very high risk depending on their rates of infection. In Spain, Catalan primary care health workers take to the streets of Barcelona on the first day of a four-day strike to demand better conditions and more resources to face the COVID pandemic. Holding up banners and chanting enough, health workers demonstrate in front of the Catalan healthcare headquarters. We're asking for help because we cannot give the people the resources they need to be treated during this pandemic. I mean, we're not treating people as we should in the current circumstances we're facing. Spain has reported nearly 28,000 new coronavirus cases since Friday, October the 9th bringing the cumulative total to 888,968. Meanwhile, Russia on Tuesday reported record high daily coronavirus cases and deaths, pushing total infections to over 1.3 million cases. However, authorities say they do not plan to impose lockdowns across the country. We have more updates on our website, and that's channelstv.com. You find out more about the pandemic, several other trending stories coming in from Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world. Channelstv.com. That's the program this evening. Thank you for watching. I'm Millicent Walker. Stay safe.